Welcome to the Pit Village podcast. It's 8 p.m. 8 p.m. 28th of March, Sunday. Here we are, and I've still not got it recorded. I've still not got the podcast for today recorded. What am I doing? Again, it's a Marathon March Pit Village podcast. I've put one out every day. We're nearly at the end now. We're on episode 26 on a podcast that started on the 3rd of March. So here we are, 25 days in, episode 26, or 26 days in, whatever, whoever, I wanted to talk today about losers, really. I wanted to talk about why you're a loser, why I'm a loser, how we can not be losers, but the fact is it's a little bit too shallow, talking about stuff like, Having low integrity, low ambition, not learning from your mistakes, being in a constant cycle in your life, not owning up to your own actions, not holding yourself accountable, not holding others accountable, not really knowing yourself, not exploring yourself, not setting a long-term plan and working towards a vision, associating yourself with other people who you know are bad for you, who you know are no good, who you know haven't got no ambition themselves, the corporate losers who are out there thinking that they're brilliant because they've got a job, but the only thing they do is slave away for a boss in a job that they don't actually like. They've got no real long-term plan on how to escape that job, progress in a career, upskill themselves. They've given in. The victim mentality losers, the complainers, the shamers, the blamers, getting rid of them lot who just want to moan and groan. But, it's a little bit too below the surface. I don't just want to talk about, oh, everybody's a loser and this and that, because I'm a loser. I have, I'm a loser. I have been a loser in my life. And it's contagious. And if you look around, or you're thinking about people now in your life, you need to get rid of those people. Because clearly, if I said loser, and three people pop into your head, that you allow to influence you. You need to chop their heads off. So that's it. That's all I had, basically. That is all I had. I was going to talk about that point. I've just made in a minute and a half for 12 minutes. And as you can imagine, it was pretty shallow. If you didn't know, I own a business. I've had to do this around running a company. So I do apologise if some of these episodes this month because i've done one every day it's been on the fly it's been off the cuff i'm just getting used to this so as we come into april the plan is to really dig deep into topics and maybe re release two or three per week but i've been thinking about virtues and it ties into not being a loser in many ways living righteously how can you live righteously what does that mean what is a virtue can you be virtuous is it a choice or is it only for a few people only for the chosen few only for jesus and moses and gandhi and, and tupac and nipsey hustle and the greats who is it for who, who are virtues for how can you live virtuously and is that a choice that's where I want to take this. Let's get deep. Not talking about the losers, the haters, the discriminators. Let's talk about living righteously. And the best way that I've found to describe virtues are either within Christianity or Aristotle's virtue theory. Of course, I need to do some more research into this. And I will do a further podcast exploring these ideas more in depth. But from what I've read, Aristotle deals with specific character virtues. Stating that virtues are a choice. It is finding a mean, finding a middle ground when it comes to the excess or a deficiency. So for instance... In courage, you are finding a middle ground within fear and confidence. So to have an excess of courage means that you make rash decisions, excessive fearlessness. Courageous people must feel fear 
but it's deciding to act within the fear. A deficiency with courage would mean that you're cowardly, that you're acting cowardice. You would run away from those situations and you wouldn't act sufficiently. So if somebody's getting robbed in front of you and they've got a gun, the assailant's got a gun, if you try and forcefully stop that, there's a good chance that both you and the victim might get shot. So to have an excess in courage would mean that you'd probably go ahead and try and stop it, even though you've got no chance of actually stopping it or you'd probably make it worse. So it's about finding a middle ground within that if you want to act virtuously. And he says this is done through acting. It cannot be, you cannot read, you cannot educate yourself on how to be virtuous. You've got to act in the world and it's something that you develop by acting in that way. And over time, that becomes habitual. Temperance. Temperance is concerned with pleasure and pain. This is basically, do you work towards a long-term aim? Do you sacrifice? Or are you seeking immediate pleasures all the time? And then you've got generosity, which we can all understand. Nobody likes somebody who is tight, you know, but you don't get anywhere by giving everything away. So if you're constantly buying everybody drinks and you're lavish with your money, you're never going to have nothing for yourself. But if you've got enough to give and somebody is in need, you should give. So having an excess in this will mean that you're always giving away all your money to everybody to show off probably. And somebody who has a deficiency would not give somebody something that they don't need when they need it. If I've got an excess in food and somebody there who's got no food, I'm going to share the food. And then we've got magnificence. And that's similar to generosity, but it deals with spending large amounts of your wealth. So when you become wealthy, do you become vulgar? Do you become tasteless? And then it, I think he tries to deal with pride, which he calls a greatness of soul. And this is one of the most interesting parts because he describes the typical characteristics of someone who has got a great soul. They do not take small risks and are not devoted to risk taking, but they will take big risk without regard for their life because a worse life is worth less than a great life. Indeed, they do few things and are slow to start on things unless there is great honour involved. They take few things seriously and are not anxious. They are frank in expressing opinions and open about what they hate and love. Not to be so would be due to fear or the esteem one has for others, others' opinions over your own. They lead life as they choose and not as others suit them, which would be slave-like. They are not given to wonder, for nothing seems great to them. They are not apt to complain about necessities or small matters, nor to ask for help. Oh, I need to delete a lot of this. They tend to possess beautiful and useless things rather than productive ones. A couple of the characteristics there of a great soul person. Essentially, this is dealing with honour and dishonour. So an excess in this would be vanity. And a, defi a deficiency in this is what they call a smallest of soul. A deficiency would be a lack of ambition. Now, of course, they deal with, with anger. And they deal with friendship. They deal with honesty. And when I say they, I mean Aristotle. This is what Aristotle's work from ancient Greece. So obviously this has been expanded upon. And of course, the virtues of mind and character in Christian theology. Prudence, justice, fortitude and temperance. These are the four cardinal virtues. Prudence is the ability to discern the appropriate course of action to be taken in a given situation at the appropriate time. So rather than seeing all these virtues as something that can be developed, prudence is the guide in which you use to act courageously or not courageously in a situation. This is how they perceive it. Justice, again meaning righteousness. Fortitude, which would be your courage, the ability to confront fear, uncertainty. Temperance, which is a practice of self-control. Abstinence discretion and moderation the stoics picked up on this a lot 
And then, of course, moving forward into more recent times and Christian theology in recent history, I suppose, from my small brain, we've got the seven deadly sins, seven heavenly virtues. So in Christianity, this has been put into the doctrine, if you wish. So, again, seven heavenly virtues, seven deadly sins and the sin will be pride where the virtue will be humility the sin is envy where the virtue is kindness the sin is gluttony where the virtue is temperance of course you've got lust and chastity wrath which is anger the virtue will be patience greed the virtue being charity the next one being sloth and then of course Diligence, persistence, effort of work. Pride. Pride, of course, being a sin in the fact that I can get prideful and, oh my God, look what I've done, I'm amazing. Humility in the fact that, oh, I'm going to sit back. Yeah, okay, I've been humbled by life. I'm not the, the, the greatest. I don't actually matter. Envy, of course, I'm being jealous of others. I'm desiring what other people want. Whereas kindness, generosity, consideration, concern for others, gluttony, overindulgence and overconsumption of food, drink or wealthy items, particularly as status symbols. Temperance is defined as moderation or voluntary self-restraint. Lust, psychological force producing intense desire for an object or circumstance while already having a significant other or amount of the desired object. So it can be sexually, money, power. You can lust for anything. And then the opposite of that, chastity, purity, a virtue related to your temperance. Someone who is chast. It's someone who refrains either from sexual activity, considered immoral, or, or any, any sexual activity. So we are creating a society where this is all seen as a joke and we, we sort of give ourselves up for anything. And I think there's some there's some wisdom to, to these things. Anger, again, an intense emotional state involving in a strong, uncomfortable and non-cooperative response to a perceived provocation. The opposite of that being patience, the ability to endure difficult circumstances. Greed and charity, they're obvious. Sloth, being lazy, not having a good work ethic. Diligence, carefulness and persistent effort. Indicative of work ethic, the belief that work is good in itself, diligence. So how can we have more virtues and less sins in our life? For me, it's a personal choice and it's a personal choice that is down to you. First off, you've got to know your values, hold yourself accountable, hold the people around you accountable, be cold in your association. So... You can't, you're going to let people influence you. You've only got time for so many people. You need to be holding yourself to a high standard and holding everybody around you to a high standard and just avoid the victim mentality at all costs. Move forward with responsibility. Make a plan. Create yourself a wider purpose and a vision that you're working towards. And undoubtedly, these virtues, whether they develop through action in the world or studying, or being conscious of how we are with others. However that is, we need to sort of practice that and become better people. And by trying to be better people, we will inevitably become more virtuous and live more righteously. So rather than focusing on what is a loser, who is a loser, why you need to get rid of losers, I've had to flip this on its head. Let's talk about virtues. How can we live righteously? And that's the thought for today. It's 9pm nearly. 8.49. I'm going to get this edited. I'm going to get it uploaded. I've only got a couple of hours before the clock strikes 12. Bloody clocks have gone forward today, aren't they? So no wonder I'm behind. I like to have the full day to think these ideas through. And next week, we're going to have a little bit more time because we're cutting it down. Three to four episodes a week rather than the full every single day and we'll make them a little bit longer and a little bit more informative so thanks a lot for your time i'd love to interview you if you are out there you own a little business 
or you're doing something within the community, please get in touch. It's interviews at pitvillagepodcast.co.uk. Thanks a lot for your time once again. See you tomorrow for another one on the Marathon March.